Hi, it's Andrew again, and today I'm going to do that same card flip animation that I did yesterday in a tutorial, but today I'm going to use uh, Google's um, code to actually break it down for you. Uh, they actually have this posted on their website, on their developer uh, website, and it's going to be this tutorial right here, and what it's going to look like is much like the one that I had yesterday, where it flips behind, back and forth between the two views and it's actually very simple but the downside to this is that it only works on ICS and up devices. Uh, one benefit to this though is this is actually GPU um, optimized so it's going to be a lot smoother than you know the other method that I showed yesterday on some slower devices. Now uh, I have I recorded a video of this animation on my Nexus and I'm actually may upload that if I can figure out how to do that with uh, the screencast on, in YouTube. So look out for that video at the end of this one to kind of show you what it looks like on real world. But actually it looks pretty good here on the emulator as well. So as you can see this is a very quick trans uh, transition. It um, The total animation that they have here takes place in uh, you know 300 milliseconds. So it's a pretty quick transition and <clears throat> it's to put that it's 0.3 of a second that's where the whole thing and uh, you'll see that in the code <clears throat> also right at halfway is when the flip actually sh occurs and I'll show you how that is determined it's actually not too too bad it's very pretty simple um, concept to grasp it's going to be new um, it's not going to be done in Java it's actually going to be done with XML codes mostly. So here's the project. Uh, it's actually part of this whole animation uh, code that you can download from them. But uh, I just took a little snippet and made it kind of sort of my own with my own views and uh, I took out some of the stuff that really isn't needed. Um, for instance, they have a, this is a multi-threaded process in this one because they also have a handler that switches this action bar. As you can see, the action bar switches right here. Now, I decided just to not do that in this uh, example, but it does work if you run the sample code with that. And uh, so let's go into the code. So it's uh, what you're going to need. Uh, what I did is I modified the menu so that I'm using this uh, just the regular settings one that's auto-generated switched it to always so that the buttons on the action bar uh, it's pretty easy to do that next thing I did was created the the layouts sorry hang on right here now we have activity main which is just going to be a frame layout uh, we got a fragment card which is the back which is this text view and the fragment card on the front which is a, another text view all they say is side one side two with a different color background so you can kind of see that transition uh, let's see. So that was pretty simple to do. And then uh, since we're going to be using native ICS upcode, these are fragments that are with the Android app fragment. Um, so these are the ones that are uh, built for fragments, not the ones that are converted to run on any device. Now, watching some uh, developer IO, Google I.O. presentations from last year if you run an app that has the support fragments it actually uses the libraries for fragments automatically in ICS and up so just FYI your performance technically shouldn't differ on ICS and newer uh, devices by using the support package because technically the system should automatically be using them anyway. So give a little heads up for that. Don't be shy on using the support packages or think that your project will um, be uh, hindered from using that versus you know these actual design fragment classes from the Android app library. Okay, so now we've got that out of the way. There's two of them that just expand each view. Now we're going to go over to the main activity. Now one big difference is that this activity is a regular activity. If we were to use a support package, this turns into a fragment activity. 
So uh, that's one big hint that we're going to be using the newer code. And we're going to be implementing Fragment Manager and on Backstack Change Listener. So what we need to do is we need to first put in this saved instance state null. We're inflating the main view just like you would normally do. And uh, what this line of code here does is it allows us to handle screen orientation changes properly. Now, most of the thing that's going to, uh, most of the code that's going to be useful is the show back, uh, M showing back. So this is going to be determined whether we're facing the front already or we're facing the back. And then, uh, like I said, we have in here just a little placeholder frame layout with the ID of container. So what we're going to want to do is when the app launches, we want to uh, add um, in here the change the container to the new fragment one since we're using that as our front and uh, as always we have to commit okay so we're also going to be into implementing this uh, add on back stack change listener in this activity and that's this part right here now we're going to inflate this uh, the menu we don't have to do anything this is auto generated code um, what you will have to do is add the um, on options item selected. Now this isn't in the code that they provide or it might actually be but um, what I did is um, I just used the regular settings button that was already auto generated. You return it to true since the boolean and uh, return super on options item selected item. So then we have this on back state on back stack changed which we check to see if it's showing the back and get um, we set the entry count to zero now if it's showing the back we get the uh, uh, get fragment manager dot pop the back stack and now we have true we want to set a custom animation and uh, these these layouts are actually in this uh, animator folder. Now this is what's going to be doing all of the the animation. These are XML layouts that, um, you know, taking a glance at them, they're actually not that hard to understand at first first look. Now um, we're going to be replacing the, this container with the new fragment too, and we're going to add it to the back stack. This actually is very important. You have to add to back stack null here or else this app actually doesn't work. It, it doesn't flip back. It does the initial flip, but doesn't flip back. So you do need to, that's what this whole uh, listener is doing. And then as always, commit it. Now let's go over these animations. So we have the left card and right card. So that's kind of the best way to visualize this. And uh, you have to have these actually with the right um, in the right order and from the right degrees for this to work. So the first one we're going to do um, at duration zero. So this is going to be the, your starting point. Um, so you have your starting point of one into zero. And this alpha is actually uh, by default set to fully uh, visible. Now if you set this to zero, you're going to be it's going to be a fully transparent view. So just leave it as alpha since we're leave, we have, you know, physical views. Now, <clears throat> here's where we actually get some of the animation. Now, we're going from negative 180 degrees to the front. And we're going to rotate on the y-axis. And we want to use this interpolator accelerate, decelerate. Now, it's kind of hard to see because the, the whole process occurs in 300 milliseconds. So what we're actually doing is at first, when we first press the button, it accelerates really fast and then decelerates right at the end. That provides a nice smooth animation. Yeah. So real quick at first, and then it actually slows down right as it's about to finish. Um, so that's what this accelerate, decelerate interpolator actually is. Now this is the, these are how we know how long this whole thing takes place is because we're gonna set um, in milliseconds, uh, how many, um, how long this duration of the flip is. 
Now, uh, to put we put those in those values, integers, and we have two two integers we want to create. That's uh, full time full and time half. So we're saying the full time to 300 milliseconds. That's right here, and then the time half is exactly half that. So um, we're doing five 150 milliseconds, and that's where the actual change occurs. So that's what we're doing here is at this half we're doing a flip so um, we're going from 0 to 1 alpha duration is um, 1 now we're going to do that for here as well we got two lefts and two rights so <clears throat> so one of these are going to be flipping to the left and the other one's flipping to the right. And they're actually going to look very similar, except these values are going to be reversed. So now we're going from 0 to 180, positive 180, not negative 180, as in the left last um, thing. We're going to do accelerate, decelerate again or along the y-axis, which is a horizontal flip, since that y-axis is going to be our pivot point. Um, and then we're going to go from uh, fully visible to invisible. So that's what this alpha thing is. We're setting, we're going from visible, which is fully visible view, to fully transparent. Uh, and that's what this alpha, if you've used Photoshop, your alpha layer is your fully transparent background layer that you're going to be putting stuff on. But uh, by default, we have a fully visible view, and you know we're overriding that and turning it into a fully invisible view. So it's kind of a way to do that. And this is actually happening, happening right at the halfway point. So, and then, so for the other flip we have here, we have this, we're going from fully visible to invisible, which is our alpha. And it's gonna be started at duration zero. We're going from positive 180 to zero along the Y axis, accelerate, decelerate, and uh, this is going to take the full time and then we're going from invisible to visible on the alpha at time half so this is ins and outs of how this all works it's not a very hard concept but it's not exactly intuitive once you've seen a few examples of these though it uh, hopefully it'll start to click and it won't be too difficult to uh, grasp the entire concept. So let's go back to the main activity and see how we implement uh, these, these layouts right here. So we want to uh, begin the transaction on the onclick. So here's the flip card. As soon as we click this button, it's going to start this process. It's going to find out whether or not we need to go from in to out and right to left. So that's what this whole process does. So when we click it, we're going to start from the right in, then right out. Then uh, if we click it again, we're going from left in to left out. So that's what the, the two processes are. So the direction, which direction you want to flip it is what order you want to put these. And we're replacing the container with the new fragment too, and we're adding it to the back stack. <clears throat> So basically this process gets reversed when we hit the button again. So that's why when we click it, it goes from side two to side one, from side one to side two. But see how the, the exact process is completely reversed. We're flipping to the left, and then we're flipping to the right. Left, right. Or I might have that backwards, but either way, um, that's kind of what this uh, example is showing you. So I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a message in the comments. And um, I'm going to try to figure a way to show you what it looks like on a device because it is GPU um, accelerated and it is fantastic looking, even on um, what we would probably consider today as not a very fast GPU on the, on the Nexus, but it's also no slouch either. And if you had the choice of using it versus using the processor in the Galaxy Nexus, I'm sure you would want to use the GPU instead. So here's something to think about in possibly implementing this in, your, in the future, if not already. Uh, and uh, it's basically going to be who your target audience is going to be 
for your app development. If they're going to be the type of person who might have the latest and greatest device with the newest operating systems, you might want to consider this for your animations instead of doing the compatibility package that I, I posted yesterday.